This week, in a most unusual occurrence, a number of graves reportedly belonging to former followers of the God of Israel were suddenly emptied. Eyewitnesses report that several resurrected saints of old arose from their graves and walked through the streets of Jerusalem. Family members were shocked when beloved relatives that had died years ago suddenly reappeared alive, youthful, and in perfect health. Some say the explanation to this mystery is somehow connected to this empty tomb, where earlier this week the body of Jesus of Nazareth had been laid to rest. Did Jesus really return from the dead, or have his followers stolen his body, as some would suggest? We'll explore the answers to those questions, plus Ido the Seer will interview the disciple Thomas, who claims to have first-hand knowledge about the whereabouts of Jesus in today's The Way I See It. That's all coming up on the Zion 7 Report. You're watching the Zion 7 Report, a comprehensive news magazine reporting today's news as it happens. With anchors Adam Zickler and Eve Havila, plus news commentary with Ido the Seer. The Zion 7 Report. Earlier this week, the Roman governor Pontius Pilate granted the request of certain Jewish leaders to have the tomb of Jesus sealed and placed under Roman guard out of fear that Jesus' disciples would steal his body and claim that he had risen from the dead. Well, now that the tomb of Jesus is empty, the question is, how did the body of Jesus disappear from under the guard of these well-armed Roman soldiers? Investigative reporter Simon the Tanner went to the empty tomb yesterday in search of the answer. The explanation of what happened here at dawn on the morning of the third day after Jesus had been crucified should be answered through eyewitness accounts. There were, after all, several people here at the tomb when this huge stone was rolled away and Jesus' body turned up missing. There were Roman soldiers guarding the entrance here as a group of women disciples approached from over there. Now, when the discovery was made that the body was missing, the soldiers took off to report the crime that way, and the women ran back in the way they came. Two groups, two directions, and as it turns out, two very different stories. The guards were simply doing their job, guarding a tomb, and in came a band of ruffians, stole the body. How about that, huh? Yeah, how about that? Except they weren't doing their job. You said yourself they were asleep. They were guarding a tomb. For goodness sake, they were tired. They fell asleep. Mm. Well, I got two problems with that story, you see? If these men fall asleep on the job as Roman soldiers, they're dead men. Rome would have their heads. And number two, if they were asleep, well, how did they see this band of ruffians, a.k.a. Jesus' disciples, go in and steal the body? I sensed that somehow I wasn't getting the whole story with the soldiers who watched the tomb. So I proceeded to my appointment with one of the women disciples, who had also been present the morning that Jesus' body had disappeared. While her story was even more fantastic than the one the soldiers told, I sensed something very genuine about what she had to say. I'm not the kind of person you'd necessarily want to be seen with. When I met Jesus, things changed. I found a whole new life. That's why it was so hard for me to let him go. Several of us got up before dawn that morning to take spices to the tomb and, and wrap Jesus' body. The sun had just appeared over the mountains when suddenly the ground began to shake. I saw the soldiers who'd been guarding the tomb fall like dead men. As an angel of the Lord rolled that huge stone from in front of the tomb, the angel told us that Jesus was not there, but that he had risen from the dead. We looked in and saw for ourselves, Jesus was not in that tomb. Then the angel said that we should go tell the other disciples what we had seen. As we turned to leave, we saw the Roman soldiers grabbing their belongings and running towards town. They looked like they'd seen a ghost. We had just begun our journey back to tell the disciples the good news when there he was standing right in front of us. We all fell at his feet and worshiped him. I'm telling you, Jesus is alive. I saw him myself. But I'm not the only one who's seen him. There are many others who have seen him. 
and can testify to the fact that he is very much alive and well. As I said before, both stories concerning the disappearance of Jesus' body take a certain measure of faith to believe. At this point, I guess we all have to decide where we should put our faith. For the Zion 7 Report, I'm investigative reporter Simon the Tanner. Thank you, Simon. As you can see, even in death, the controversy surrounding Jesus continues. It sure does, Eve, as unusual sightings of Jesus continue to pour in. These two men say they spent several hours walking and talking with Jesus and didn't even know it. Halim, daughter of Jamil, explains. I think I could safely say that neither one of us had ever experienced anything like what we did on the road to Emmaus. Cleopas, his wife Mary, and their friend Epantus had followed Jesus for quite some time. But something happened here in Cleopas' home last night that gave these followers an even deeper appreciation of God's Word. Well, we were walking along talking about everything that had happened uh, with and Jesus and what, what a shock it had been. And when this stranger walked right up amongst us and said, what are you talking about? And, and I wanted to say, where have you been, under a rock? Yeah, I was thinking, where has this guy been asleep for the past three days? But we didn't say that. <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> I just asked him if he was the only one in Jerusalem who was unaware of what had happened in the past few days, how the chief priests and rulers had crucified the prophet Jesus, whom we'd all hoped was going to redeem Israel from Rome's oppression. The next thing we know, he starts quoting scriptures and talking about how the Messiah had to suffer these things uh, before entering his glory. Beginning with Moses and quoting one prophet after another, he taught us what the scriptures says about the Messiah. And, and by listening, we knew that the answers to our questions were right there in God's word. It was like everything he said made perfect sense. And it was here as he sat and broke bread giving thanks to God that we recognized him to be Jesus. But no sooner did we know that he was the Lord than he vanished before our very eyes. Why he disappeared so quickly, I don't know, but I do know this. Jesus of Nazareth is alive. Cleopas said that later when he shared this story with the other disciples, Jesus appeared again to all of them. Ido the seer will talk with the disciple Thomas about his own visitation with Jesus in today's The Way I See It. It's all coming up right after this. is coming when every scripture will be fulfilled, including the triumphant return of Jesus to gather his church. What will you be doing? It's time for The Way I See It with Ido the Seer. Hello and welcome to The Way I See It. I'm your host, Ido the Seer. With me in the studio today is the disciple Thomas, who claims he too has seen Jesus alive. Thomas, is this true? It is true, Ido. I saw Jesus with my own two eyes. I know that he lives. Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but when all these sightings of the resurrected Jesus began to happen, you didn't believe it at first, did you? No, I must admit, I had a little trouble believing it at first. So you doubted? I wouldn't say I doubted. I was uncertain. Okay, let me see if I got this right. All the other disciples had seen him, and they were trying to convince you that he was alive, right? Yes. On the evening of the day Jesus arose from the dead, all the disciples, except me, were gathered together, and suddenly, Jesus was standing right there with them. Peace be unto you. 
Everyone was surprised to see him again, as you can imagine. He stayed for a while and explained some things in the scriptures, and he even ate something. According to everyone who was there, it was pretty awesome. My sources tell me that you were very emphatic about not believing your fellow disciples. Yeah, I was pretty much a hard head. I told them I wouldn't believe Jesus was alive until I'd seen the nail print in his hand and put my hand in his side. And is that what happened? That's what happened. Well, seeing is believing. You must have felt very satisfied. Really? You know, I didn't. And actually, Jesus set me straight on the whole seeing is believing thing when he came to the room the next time. And suddenly, he was in our midst as we were all gathered together, and he headed straight for me. He held out his hand for me to touch, but I didn't need to do that. I knew I was looking at my Lord and my God. I believe. He said to me that I believed because I had seen, but blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. Whoa, that is powerful. Thank you for coming and sharing your story with us today. It's my pleasure, Ido. Kiddos, do you realize the importance of what Jesus said? He told Thomas that those who simply believe that he is alive without having any more proof than just the testimony of his disciples are more blessed than those who have seen him in the flesh. That means we all can be partakers of the resurrection power that Jesus displayed over the grave. Don't miss out on this, kiddos. Be a believer today. I'm Ido the Seer, and that's the way I see it. Thanks, Ido. Well, that's our program for today. Tune in next week for more late-breaking news on the Zion 7 Report. Shalom.